Hello everyone. I want to make a video, a sermon this morning. Uh, I'm gonna be in. I'm still in the Proverbs series. I'm in chapter 29. I'm almost through. Uh, so it says in the King James Version, chapter 29 of Proverbs says, "He that often been reproved hard in his neck shall be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear it through, the people mourn. Whoso Loveth wisdom rejoiceth with his father, but he that keepeth company with harlot spendeth his substance. So, uh, so that's what we want to do this morning. And uh, said so when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked ruleth, the people mourn. Uh, you know, you ever had a bad boss and. And maybe they decided to leave the company or something. You got a better one and how that feels. Um, you know, if we're kind and just and fair with people, uh, we can make them happy, whether it's at the jo job site or at home or at church. Uh, but when we don't have that kindness and understanding, it, it makes it that, that kind of leadership and rule is harsh and uh, people they dread to come to work and come to church or come home as a family so uh, I want to sow the seeds of kindness you know I've heard of a man named Johnny Appleseed and he liked apples so he planted apples everywhere he went uh, we have seeds within us we have seeds of greatness within us and uh, I want to plant things that's gonna come up it's something that I can partake of or someone else can, that fruit that other people could come by and get when they need it. Uh, God's given me so much, I want to be able to give some back to somebody else. Uh, verse 7 says, The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Um, there's people uh, in... They're, they're nearly invisible. Uh, you have to seek them out to know who it is. I, I wish right now at this very moment, I'm trying to seek out people that need help, but I wish that I knew who they was that needed a personal phone call or a visit or a prayer or whatever. Uh, I don't want them hidden, invisible people to keep existing. They always will be. Jesus said you'll the poor you'll have with you always. I know they'll always be there. It's like the little boy that there's different variations of the story, but he was standing at the ocean and there was these creatures that would wash ashore. And if they didn't get back in the water, they'd die, is my understanding. And he was out there throwing them back in. And this old man walked out there and he says, what are you doing? And he said, I'm throwing these back in so they can live. He said, son, look here. There's thousands, thousands on this bench. You're never going to get them all back in there. And he picked one up, and he threw it back in, the little boy did. And he said, here's one that's not going to have to die. There are millions of people in the world. We're not going to cheer them all up. We're not going to convert all of them. But uh, we just can do what we can. And I want to make a difference in this life. I want to um, help somebody that I help somebody that I help somebody. Uh, want to do all I can. In our church, we came up with the term, well, our, uh, we say, did you come looking for a miracle? Uh, we believe in that. And uh, we had this term sponsoring, sponsor people. I said, let's sponsor somebody and I didn't know what to call it, so that's what we called it. And uh, what I meant by that was the people that's doing good, pray for the people that's not doing so good. And I'm telling you, it worked for our church. Uh, uh, went and visited the church, and well, first of all, the man, the the, the man of that church came to visit our church, and he heard us talking about sponsoring. And I went back to his church, maybe. Uh, two or three weeks a month later, whatever it was, and I noticed that everybody shook my hand. They was, uh, they're always friendly, but they were saying, 
uh, and the man told me, said, we tried sponsoring at our church and said it has made such a difference. And uh, it worked. The verse 10 says, the bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Uh, Um, how can we le learn to love the ones that hurt us? That's not easy. Uh, Christ did it, and uh, I'm supposed to be a, a child of God, so I can do it. He, he will supply that to us if we just seek him out. I pray that the Lord will help me with the evil people in this world. Uh, if I can take an enemy and make him my friend, then I won't have that. That's one less enemy I'll have. Verse 12 says, If a ruler bark hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. You know, and I've talked a little bit about practical jokes here the other day, and you may think it completely harmless. And I, I am a jokester, but the, the, the uh, pranks is not my style. And if it's yours, just be careful. You can really hurt somebody because uh, a lot of times somebody else has to look bad. You know, you, you make somebody look bad, uh, dumb or whatever, and they get a laugh out of people. Verse 13 says, The poor and the deceitful men meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. God made us all. Uh, he loves us all. Until we prove to him that that uh, we're just not going to do what he wants us to do. Verse 16 says, When the wicked are multiplied, transgression, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. It, it does, it looks good to see people helping people instead of harming them. Uh, Uh, I've I've been uh, at places to eat or whatever, and I start to pay my bill, and they say somebody's already paid it, and I, I, I it made me feel so honored and good uh, that it makes me want to do the same thing. Uh, helping somebody is such a a joy. Verse twenty says, "See that thou man that is hasty in his words, there's more hope of a fool than in him." You know, you have these salesmen, uh, they try to sell you something and you tell them what they want and they want to make a sale so bad, they don't even hear you. <clears throat> it seems like that people don't listen. I'm, I'm guilty. Uh, with the greatest compliment you can give somebody is to listen to what they say all the way through and not interrupt. Uh, listening is just about a lost art. Uh, you know, we... we my wife would say something about you didn't hear me. I said, well, I was listening, but I didn't hear. Uh, things can get to be just a racket to you, even the Word of God. If you don't uh, <coughs> let it meet your ears and go down in your heart, it won't do you much good. It's uh, it's kind of frustrating to deal with that kind of person that will never listen to you, and uh, they'll never quiet down to hear what you say. Uh, there's a lot to be said for the person who learns to listen instead of talk so much. When we listen, we learn. When we talk, we block learning. We need to learn to listen so that we can honestly help people come to us in need. Verse 24, when a, Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul, he beareth cursing in betrayeth it not. He heareth cursing and betrayeth it. Many times we feel guilty about the thing. It's not our fault. And there's people that they can make you feel pretty guilty if you let them. Just know within yourself what you what you are uh, when somebody rakes you over the coals. Uh, not so much to respond back or try to defend yourself, but just know in your heart. If they do that, 
we could either let them get away with it or not let them get away with it. Uh, we could we can just know what we are in our heart and that, and that not let, just not allow them to hurt us. So I pray that Lord will lead me to the people and that we can strengthen me and I can strengthen them and that we can do each other good. Um, may have rambled a little bit more today, I, but uh, I sure did try and I sure do love you. And I care about you and I wanted to get you something that helped you. As I say in about all the recordings anymore, I didn't do this to replace your minister or you get in the church. I did it to help supplement you in case you were in the rehab hospital laying flat on your back sick or have the coronavirus. I did it for you. And uh gonna give you my number two five six five zero eight forty four ten. If you need me, uh just Leave me a message. If I don't answer you, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Leave me a message who you are and what it is you got on your mind. So, 256508-4410. And until the next time we do this, may God richly bless you.